Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we're going to look at a quick study from Ron Ranson, following a Ron Ranson challenge that I put up in um, the Ron Ranson uh, Disciples Facebook page. Uh, this picture is originally on the back of this book, but other people were saying that their version of the big brush watercolor had a different backing. So I guess different printings had different backings. But it does occur on page eight and nine um, in the book. The only thing that I think was said about it is that it, um, the loose, almost abstract painting was produced in about 10 minutes. So whenever I get to it, I'm just gonna try to keep it within 10 minutes and we'll see. I, from my previous experiments with the Ron Ranson just studies, I learned that I needed to put out fresh pigment. So I put out fresh ultramarine, raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber, Payne's gray, light red oxide, and lemon yellow. I did not put out fresh alizarin because I do not think that it's in here. It may be a little bit in this mix. It almost kind of looks like a French ultramarine, but um, I think I could probably just mix some light red in there. So a few things. Um, fresh paint is what I found is going to be necessary. Uh, looking at this, I'm not sure if this is like a yellow ochre or lemon yellow, so I'm going to play around with that. But I don't see any green take place. Maybe right in here. It might just be separate washes. So I'm going to have to be careful there. Uh, the tree trunk itself looks like it was done with the hake brush coming on the side, which a lot of people use um, if they're painting birch trees. Uh, a lot of hake movement in here. We have some scratching that backfilled and scratching that did not backfill. So I think those two things taking place in one painting um, is interesting because you get your dark effect with the scraping if it backfills and you get your light effect um, if it doesn't. Let's see. Another thing that really jumped out at me, whenever I paint in my own videos, um, I talk about kind of the, the rigor and just kind of doing calligraphy type strokes and letting it just kind of let loose. And looking at his brush strokes here, they're very loose and very calligraphy-esque. So I'm curious what can come out of that. Also like one little nitpicking thing, this branch doesn't connect completely, but I actually really like that. I think it gives it um, a, a really good vibe. Um, whether that would work for everybody or just it was the perfect placement, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna get into it. Um, I have the back of a quarter sheet of um, Stonehenge. This is the 90 pound and it's the uh, the cream one. I just had a painting on the other side. I had it on the desk. I just flipped it over just to jump into it. I'm gonna limp myself to a newer hake brush and Let's go with the number four rigger because I believe in this book he recommends the number three. So I usually use number one and then um, one and four are the two that I use. He does recommend a flat, but I don't think a flat got used in this. It could have been used sideways uh, going up that tree trunk, but I'm gonna avoid that. Uh, another thing, it's really early Saturday morning. Um, it's about eight o'clock and I've already been up for over an hour and I had an hour long oolong tea session. And um, oolong makes me sleepy and relaxed to begin with. Um, I'm not sure if the one that I had was kind of a GABA process type uh, oolong. But between that and other things, I'm just kind of tired, so I apologize if um, I just sound drowsy. So, I usually wet my paper but me and Joe were kind of talking about the origin of that. And I don't think Ron Ranson himself completely wet his uh, paper. So I'm just gonna go in with washes at first on the dry paper itself. Now, um, the mixing will be off camera, but it seems like we have this ultramarine that kind of waters down 
passes behind these guys. I think I'm already making too many passes on top of it. Maybe let that looseness happen and those light effects happen. Then it switches over in the sky to either a raw sienna or a lemon yellow. The lemon yellow will produce a green with the um, ultramarine. But if I could try to isolate it, just give it a little extra pop up there. There we go. Now, we come down to a horizon line in here. I'm just going to work my way back to front on this. Definitely more lemon yellow in there, so let's just kind of glob it. These, this tree grouping goes in light, a uh, wet, I think. So let's move to a burnt, raw, raw sienna, just trying to clean it. I'm gonna clean the brush. Let's go um, burnt sienna. Kind of get, trying to get that one and done type stroke there. You can see I probably should have mixed and watered this down more, but that might actually just lead to a nice after effect. I could probably put a burnt umber, which I'm doing the same thing. I guess I'm so used to wet and wet. That's what's happening. It travels along there. Okay, enough in the foreground. Now, here we have a sienna esque. I have a lot of pigment on the brush. Initial marking, which I think has some ultramarine in it. I think I'm going too dark, but we'll just see what happens. Push that around. tree trunk will be about here. Very abstract. Burnt umber. Burnt umber. Let's put some Payne's gray. Guys, no hissing at each other. You all play nice. Let's see. I actually have a little speck of blue in here. Controlling straight from the tube is something that I think would be paramount to learning Ron Rance and stuff. Let's see if we do a wide scrape for that tree trunk right there. Just kind of preserving that. Let's see what type of scrapes we can get here. This is a more scratchy scrape, so I'm not even going to use the rounded end. I'm just going to use the sharp end, which just has a more likely effect to backfill. Scrapes here, scrapes here. The 90 pound paper will buckle a little bit more, but um, whenever I have the clips down, it just helps stretch it out in that fashion. Now I'm debating, do I hit it with the blow dryer and let it dry off some and then feed in a little bit more color? at the last moisture level, because you can see how damp it is there. Let me pause this and let's do that. All right, I blow it out, dried it very quick and very gently. And as you can see, it's not completely dry. We have a puddle right there. But what I wanted to do is a slight wet and wet on top.
top of these two spots to get these trees a little bit further forward than the background ones. At this point with raw sienna, we're going to do another dry brush effect. Okay. Well, let's see, in this tree trunk, I didn't use any light red oxide. I'm beginning to think that I probably don't need to for this one, but let's try this sideways brush effect to bring that up. It's going to be dark on each side. And this hooks over here. And I think the rest would be rigor work. So let's first put in our dark on either side. It looks like you pushed up and you catch some dry brush effects. I keep trying to get that in here. And I think one of the things that needs to be mentioned is using the, the Ron Ranson method itself you can obviously choose any method you want and you can look at any painter and um, work in any direction that you want. Looking at different painters both helps and I think hinders at times because as you develop your own style and at this point I think I personally have a, you know, a pretty interesting unique style that I enjoy but as you try other styles, you look at other painters, it um, kind of starts muddling your kind of thought process that you have already planned out. So I'm looking for those type of um, calligraphy type strokes. It comes up. Now, one thing with branch work, I don't know if he ever said it in any of his books, but going back to Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting, whenever you are painting thinner objects against a light background, those objects themselves are going to, um, to lighten up because of the wrapping of the light that's taking place. So uh, you can just use lighter washes um, or mixes with these to get that lighter effect. And I'm not sure if that was inherent or where that was coming from, from um, Mr. Ron Ranson. And now that we're like back wet and wet here, I can scrape in as well. So it doesn't have to be scraped during the initial wet washes. These are the backfill ones, but there's no wetness there. looking for more textures but I'm gonna have to start wrapping this one up because I didn't time myself but he had said he spent about 10 minutes you can add texture in the one thing that I think that I need to take away from this session right here is if I'm not painting wet and wet and I'm creating washes as I go I need to make sure my pigment isn't um, clumped, so that's the one thing. And I probably just need to uh, bite the bullet and brush, wash my brush more. Now, my sky softened quite a bit, so 
Let's see if I can wipe off a spot on here. And while I do that, I'm just gonna say, um, you know, you're always welcome to follow along with anything that I do. And I always get permission to um, sell anything that I do if you follow along with it. You're more than welcome to uh, sign your name and sell it. Um, let's see. I probably shouldn't have messed with that. So that was the fiddling. So I would have had to get it done initially. But let's let's just bring that across and see how that goes. Uh, other thing, huge thank you to everybody that supports this channel on Patreon. Um, if you want to support this channel, I have the links up there, uh, down below. Um, I have the Etsy page if you want to support this channel through uh, purchasing paintings. And just, you know, a huge thank you to everybody that watches and supports. So let's do a dry off and we'll see how the last thing looks. Okay, so some last minute thoughts. Um, and once again, thank you for watching. Uh, with that wash that I did at the end, um, that then washed out some of the tree branches. Interesting effect, might be something that you'd personally want to explore and see if you like that, um, that extreme um, atmospheric effect. Uh, I personally wish that I hadn't done it. I wish that I had went in stronger into the background to begin with. And mine, Ultramarine, I think now definitely at this point that had alizarin or um, the light red oxide mixed into it. Here was a land mass and it wound up becoming a sky for me just because of that wash and just the way this sits in front of it. Um, I needed to pay more attention into the lines and guiding within to create that. Um, as I pointed out, I think getting a more uh, mixed, not clumpy wash would have helped in these areas, though it did leave some interesting effects, so maybe that might be worth it. But those should have just been one or two strokes rather than me going back over it, so that was definitely fiddling. Uh, doing the dry off and then passing another layer in front, I like that, but I don't have the type of trees that he had put in, so I'm going to have to watch a video to see his exact approach there. I like the dark on the side of the tree trunk. Um, that's just like kind of a stereotypical um, compositional effect. You're dark next to your lightest. A lot of people do that. And it is in the, the third of the painting, actually. Yeah, so he put it in that type of area. The calligraphy type strokes, um, I would play around with those if you want to keep doing the Ron Ranson method. Um, and then knowing the moisture levels of the paper for the type of scrapes that you can get. Ones that would backfill, ones that won't, and tools that are rounded and tools that are sharp to get those as well. On that note, I think that's everything to discuss in this one. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see or any questions you have, let me know down below in the comments. Thanks again, and I hope you have a great day.